Hey guys, Cody with Princess Craft RV. Come along with me today as we go through this 2021 Tab 320 clamshell with a shower boondock edition. So let's get started right up front here on how to get this thing hooked up to your tow vehicle. So to get started, this thing's gonna ride on a two inch ball. So once you get this thing lowered down on a two inch ball using your standard uh, manual crank jack here, uh, all you gotta do is pick up on the back here and slide the coupler forward and get it to latch down. Make sure there's uh, these ears right here fall down into that cavity and you'll be latched on and ready to go uh, as far as that goes. To finish hooking up, we're gonna have your safety chains which need to crisscross and then they will clip to your receiver hitch. And last but not least will be your safety breakaway cable uh, which needs to also be hooked to the receiver hitch on a separate type of clip or you can pull this out, loop it through, and then hook it back into the breakaway box. Uh, when you get ready to unhook, you can unhook all your chains and your cables. And then to get the uh, coupler lock to release, all you've got to do is pick up on the back, pull up and back, and that's going to pull the coupler back and get it to release. We also have your seven-way cord here that's going to control all of your running lights, turn signals, brake lights, and electric brakes on the trailer if your tow vehicle is so equipped with a brake control. When, you, uh, when you're hooked up in tow, you do need to remove the wheel for travel. So to do that, all you gotta do is pull this pin out and then the wheel will drop off and you can store that either in the propane cover or in your, tra in your tow vehicle, in the trailer, wherever you so prefer. Okay, so moving up into our covered box here, we're gonna find our propane and our battery. So to get that open, just pull down on those little bungees and this thing is gonna pop open for you. Inside, you're gonna find a standard 20 pound propane cylinder uh, that can be either refilled or exchanged to whichever is easiest for you or whatever is available. Uh, to get this thing removed for service, first things first, make sure your service valve is closed. Remove your uh, propane service line here. And then you'll have to loosen up this uh, bolt right here with the wing nut on it that's gonna loosen up the clamp and allow you to remove the cylinder from the clamp. So once you get it out, throw it in your vehicle, do make sure it's in the upright position, get it refilled or exchanged, bring your new one back, putting it in is just the opposite. So all we got to do is drop this thing back in here. We're going to tighten up our clamp bolt here, reattach our service line. And if you're going to continue propane use, then you're going to need to open up your service valve. So on your battery cables here, uh, white's gonna be ground, green's gonna be your power, and then you're gonna have two fuses up here as well. Check those out, make sure your uh, neither of these is blown if you're having any kind of 12 volt power issues. And last but not least is gonna be our battery disconnect switch right here. Uh, as you can see with this little groove right here, this little cutaway, this is gonna be for connected power, so you're gonna see the green in the side there and also your battery is going to be in the upright position on the switch. Disconnected, it's going to be red over here on the little cutaway and your battery is going to be kind of up and down there showing that it's disconnected. Um, the other thing that's going to be in here is going to be access to your spare tire crank down. Uh, just right here next to the propane cylinder, you're going to see the uh, crank for that right here. It's going to be a 21 millimeter or 13 16 socket to uh, crank that down. And it just kind of works like the one in your car. You just crank it down, take the spare off of it, put your flat on it, crank it back up. Um, and that pretty much covers everything as far as that goes. You know, you can use this for storage and other things as well. Uh, whatever you can fit in there. Stabilizer crank jack that comes with the trailer, nice and long for you so you don't have to reach up under the trailer. Um, all four corners of the trailer are going to have stabilizers. All you got to do is get that onto the um, bolt head there. And then all you got to do is crank it up and down. So all the way up for obviously for travel. And once you get the trailer level, you're going to use these, run them down to the ground just for stabilization. They're not used to lift or level the trailer. You just want to run them to the ground, put a little pressure on them. That's going to help stabilize the uh, trailer for why you are in it. All right, moving on from there, we've got your uh, cassette toilet access door. So the top one here is keyed lock. You'll get a key with it so you can lock uh, access to your cassette. But to get this thing open, you do have to push both of these in and that's gonna allow that door to pop open. And inside you're gonna find your cassette. 
uh, which is where all your toilet water and waste is gonna go. Uh, to get this thing out of here, uh, basically all you gotta do is pick up on this lever right here at the bottom, grab the whole thing and pull it straight out. And that's gonna be your cassette. So now you can take this thing to the dump or a toilet or whatever, turn your spout out. This is a vent release right here, so it doesn't um, pull a vacuum on the tank while you're dumping it, and just dump it. Dump it until it's empty, and once you're done with that, then you can take this cover off, use this green lever right here, and that's gonna actually open the uh, flap on the inside, and that's gonna allow you to do a good rinse on this tank. Uh, which is definitely recommended that you get this thing good and clean, especially if you're going to go be going home and putting it away for storage. Once you're done, close it up. Put the lid back on it, fold your spout in, and we're going to slide this thing back in. Before I put it back in here, though, I do want to show you one thing that can kind of controls the pump on this trailer for this, because this is plumbed into the water for the trailer. It does not have its own reservoir is gonna be this little fuse right here. If that, if for some reason the pump's not working for this, check that little fuse, make sure it's not blown. Um, and it's just a standard little blade fuse that you can uh, get pretty much anywhere if you need one. Put this back in, all you're gonna do is push it right back in and that's it. So moving back from there, we've got your 30 amp service cord on this trailer. Very easy to hook up. You're gonna have three prongs on it. You've got two basically flat and then one that's gonna be a L shape. You're gonna have the same thing on the side of the trailer. All you've gotta do is match up those two L shapes. Give it just a little bit of a twist. That's gonna help lock it on. And then use the lock ring to finally uh, secure it nice and good to the trailer. And that's gonna keep it from getting yanked out if somebody accidentally trips on it or anything like that. Moving back to our wheels and tires, and this goes for both sides. Manufacturer is going to have a recommended PSI for this, which you actually will see on this trailer right here below the, uh, the cassette toilet door. You have your tire size and your tire pressure. We do follow the manufacturer's recommended tire pressure for these, uh, which for this trailer is 50 PSI. So they do need to be checked just like on your tow vehicle or your car that you do regularly, you check your tire pressure. And the other thing that needs to be checked is your lug nuts. Uh, these are gonna need to be checked and torqued to at least 100 foot pounds. Uh, here at Princess Craft, we recommend before every trip that you check that just to make sure you're good to go. You definitely don't want one falling off while you're traveling. Moving back from there, we're gonna have your Aldi exhaust. Um, this is where, you know, if you're using the gas side of your Aldi system for uh, hot water or heating the trailer, all the exhaust gases are gonna come out here, so this can get warm. Don't put anything over it, don't cover it. Watch your hands, don't get burned on it. All right, New Camp has equipped this uh, trailer with the B&B Motors Nautilus P2.5 system. Um, so there's kind of a couple of valves going in here, and it's, there's a lot of different positions for those. So stick with me on this. Let's see if we can get through it. I'll show you how all this works. Uh, first things first, let's talk about normal camping with a city water connection. We're gonna take our hose and we're gonna run it up through the floor here, through this, uh, through this uh, spot in the floor. This is gonna allow you to keep uh, the, the door on this closed so your hose is uh, secured. Uh, it's gonna hook up to the city water connection side. You can see it says city water connection. That's gonna be your right hand side connection. Anything fresh water is gonna hook up to this side, whether we're filling the tank or hit hooking up just for city water. Once we're hooked up for city water uh, connection, then we just need to make sure our valves are in the proper position. In the bottom right hand corner, you can see here the green needs to be to the left and the blue needs to be to the right. So just like that. Now we can use this trailer in a campground that has city water provided and everything will be good to go. If you need to dry camp, um, what we have to do is we're still gonna have our water hose hooked up to this side. All we've gotta do is take our blue valve and turn it down. And that's gonna allow the water to bypass the rest of the trailer and just fill the tank. Now. One thing to keep in mind is there is not a tank monitor on here, so you don't know how full it is, so, uh, or at least out here. So just pay attention and um, try not to overfill it so you don't break anything. Uh, once you get that full, all you gotta do is shut your water off. Now you're ready to go. Now we have to change our valves to dry camp. This is gonna allow us to use the water pump to extract the water from the tank. So we're gonna take the right, uh, blue valve, turn it to the right, and we're gonna turn the green valve down. Now we're in dry camp mode, which means now we can use the pump switch 
um, to turn the water pump on. Either out here or the one on the inside will both run the same water pump and you can dry cam. The other two options for this are going to be a sanitized slash winterized valve position. Now what this does is either takes uh, winterization fluid straight to the trailer, bypasses the tank for winterization. Sanitize is actually going to take that water, put it in the freshwater tank, and then you use the water pump to pump it out to the rest of the system. So let me show you how to do that. You would hook up to this side where it says sanitize winterize. If you want to winterize the trailer, First things first, we have to drain all the water out, which will be these two valves that uh, New Camp has added down here in the bottom corner. These are gonna be your low point drains, hot and cold. First things first, you're gonna open those up, let all the water drain out of the lower side of the system. While that's draining, what you'll wanna do with your green and blue valves is actually turn them to a 45 degree, just like so, and that's gonna allow the system to drain out uh, more efficiently. Once all that gets done, then you're going to close these off. You're going to uh, bypass the water heater system here. So this is going to go to bypass mode. And then we're going to turn our valves to winterize, which is going to be green to the left, blue to the right. And we're going to hook up a piece of water hose that's probably cut or just a short piece of hose to this side. And then we're going to take it and turn it down into a jug of antifreeze. Once we get there, then we're gonna use our pump switch out here, turn it on, and it's gonna start a siphon on our antifreeze into the fixtures inside the trailer. So you'll need to go inside the trailer, turn your shower on, turn your uh, faucets on um, in the clamshell on this one, and don't forget your exterior shower here as well. Uh, you'll wanna winterize all of that, run it till it runs pink. You probably use more than one gallon of antifreeze to do so, but once everything that moves water flows pink, you're done. Just close everything up and you're done. The other option, the other thing that we've got to do when we pull this thing out of storage and we flush all of the antifreeze out is we need to sanitize the system. So to do that again, we're going to be hooked up to this side. We are going to take and um, turn our blue valve down, keep our green valve to the left, and then we're going to hook up here and we're going to run again. We're going to have a piece of hose that's going to run down into a mixture of sanitizing solution whether that be a uh, Thetford water sanitizer product or a solution that you make up of your own for sanitizing. Again, we're gonna use our pump switch. Now, instead of it pumping to the fixtures this time, it's gonna pump that solution into the fresh water tank. And it's gonna need to sit there per however long it needs to sit there to do its sanitizing depending upon what you're using. Once it sits there for a period of time, you're gonna wanna pump it through the rest of the system. So again, you're gonna wanna put this into dry camp mode. So green down and blue to the right. Now again, you're still using your water pump and you can pump this through your fixtures to help clean all of your lines and everything to the uh, water fixtures. Once that's done, then you just need to decide, you know, finish draining everything out, flush it out. And then if you're gonna be using city water, get everything set back to city water and you'll be ready to go. Don't forget to unbypass your water heater whenever you are done flushing and sanitizing and winterizing, dewinterizing everything. Now I know there's, that's a lot going on. This can be confusing. There is an owner's manual online for this. Again, it's, it's made by B&B Molders. It's the Nautilus P 2.5 system. So if you need to look it up, that's gonna be the best advice I can give you on that other than this video. They also include your SAT, um, aux and cable hookups in here. Uh, New Camp does not use all of these. Um, I believe they are just hooked up for the cable on this one. Uh, so if you're going to be staying in a campground that may provide park cable, you can hook up to that one right there and get the, uh, get the park cable coming into the trailer. Um, so that'll pretty much cover that again. A lot of information there. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always call us. We'll walk you through it or you can look it up online. Uh, to use the access door on this thing, they have equipped it with a magnet. There's a little magnet in here that'll give some aid in keeping that door open. But to close it, it's just this big lever here and it gives it a good weather tight seal. While we're kind of down here underneath the trailer, we also have our uh, gray water drain, which on this they've set up to use a standard sewer hose. Uh, that can be changed out to use a gray water drain hose. Uh, just changes out the bayonet cap to adapt straight to a water hose. 
Um, and then there, this is going to be your gray valve right here. It's actually going to open the dump valve on the gray water tank. So moving right behind our water management system is going to be our exterior shower. So to use that, all you got to do is open it up, pull it out. These are going to be your hot and cold valves. Just choose your water temperature. And then all you've got to do is push that lever down and water is going to come out. To get it to stop, just push kind of back on the uh, top of that and that's going to shut it off. Uh, again, don't forget to winterize this when you do your winterizing. Since it is exterior, they do tend to freeze pretty easy. Um, and the other thing is, is don't forget to turn these off whenever you close all this up. If you leave these on, they have been known to cause some water mixing issues where you can't get good hot water. So do remember to shut that off. All right, moving around into the clamshell area of this trailer. Um, we've got your sink back here. So to use your sink, uh, pretty, pretty easy. In and out this way is gonna be for your water flow. And then back and forth is going to be temperature control. You can see towards you is going to be cold and away is going to be hot. Now this is going to drain into the gray water tank so you don't have to have anything directly hooked up to it to drain. Underneath we've got a, just a good storage area. We've got your, this cord right here is actually going to be for your microwave. So when you're putting things in here, make sure you don't accidentally unplug that. And this is going to be the backside to your exterior shower. Again, don't cram things in there. Those are plastic fittings. You don't want to break anything. To use the latches on these doors, uh, they, all you got to do is push them in. And you can see here that it pops up the, uh, the lock whenever it's pushed in. To release it, just push it. It's going to pop out, and that's going to allow you to open and close. And that goes for all of the compartments on this 2021 model. Um, overhead, we've got your uh, pass-through storage that goes all the way into the trailer. We've got two doors on each side, and these are equipped with <clears throat> latches as well. And you can see they're just here. When the uh, compartment is closed, it's out of sight. You do have to remember that that latch is in the middle, um, so you do have to depress that to get these to open. If you just yank, then you could end up pulling the screws out and pulling that latch off of the door. So don't forget that step. Um, while we're up overhead, we do have your clamshell light up here. It's just going to be a push button to turn that on and off. And we've got your Dometic two burner cooktop. Now, when you open this up, this is a glass lid. This thing's going to tip all the way back and you'll feel it kind of drop down as it should. And that's going to actually lock it into place. So it's not going to fall forward on you. <clears throat> so when you get ready to close it, you do have to lift up on it and that's going to release it to close. But to get this thing to light, um, all you've got to do is take and turn your knob to the light position, push and hold it down, and then you're going to push your striker button here, and you'll hear that ticking. That's going to be it trying to ignite. Uh, just push that until everything lights. <clears throat> Once it gets lit, hold your button down for about another uh, 5 to 10 seconds until you get your flame good and established and hot. Then let it off, set your temperature, and you're good to go. Again, this is a glass cooktop, so I highly recommend letting everything cool down before you close it so you don't cause any damage to the glass. While we're up top here, we do have your charging station, 12 volt uh, outlet, as well as two USB charge ports. And then just right around the corner there, we do have a 110 outlet, good little tabletop section here for a coffee pot or something like that. These two black uh, boxes up in the corners are gonna be for ex your uh, exterior speakers here. Moving down, we've got your refrigerator. Biggest thing about this is gonna be your control knob back there in the back corner. You can see a zero to five knob. Zero is going to be off. Five is going to be your coldest setting. So choose whatever works best for you. Got your contour microwave here. It's going to be a uh, typical turntable style microwave. Just has your turntable in there. Pretty much what's in most homes these days. <clears throat> now when you get ready to close your clamshell, Make sure you do have these closed. They do sit right up against that. We don't want you to cause any damage. Don't forget to turn your light off and then we're gonna close this thing down. So once it gets closed, it just has turn latches on the back. Just give it a little push because you do have seals here that do need to make a good seal. So it's gonna take a little push and then all you gotta do is turn it and that's gonna get it latched and then these are keyed locked. So when you open it, it's just opposite. Make sure they're unlocked, turn them. They should both be facing up and just give it a little pull. Once you get up, 
it's going to automatically take over because it's got uh, gas struts on it and it's going to get it up in the air for you. One last thing to mention here is going to be this little electric looking valve right here on the off door side strut. This is an electronic shut off for the gas system for the cooktop back here. Uh, so just be cautious that you don't get anything or break anything there. It is a safety device. Just underneath the clamshell here, we've got a, an exterior uh, hookup for uh, an exterior gas appliance, LP gas appliance. Um, all you got to do, it's going to be a quick neck, pull that out. You're going to have a quick neck hose that would run off to either an exterior grill or a camp stove or something like that. It does have a, a shutoff valve here. So once this is all hooked up, so it's quick connect, so you push it back, you're going to push your quick connect fitting into it and let it go. And make sure it's hooked up to whatever it is you're going to do, and then you're going to turn your gas valve on. Once that valve's on, gas is going to flow freely to whatever it is you're using. Now, you'll see once that valve's on, you cannot push this collar back. You can't accidentally disconnect your hose. You do have to turn this back off to get the hose to disconnect when you're done using. All right, let's move on around to door side of the trailer. So over here, uh, we do have just a couple things. This is gonna be a lagoon mount here for your table. So you can take your lagoon table from the inside of the trailer and move it out here to have some storage uh, or some table space. And you do have two 110 outlets out here that you can hook into. So you can set a table up out here, put something on it, plug in and have somewhere to put stuff. Um, this trailer is equipped with a uh, Keter rail all the way along the upper edge. That's gonna be for uh, add-on accessories that you can get, such as a, an awning or an add -a room or something like that that uh, you can get for these uh, new camp trailers. So that's gonna bring us down to our entry, do uh, entry door step, which is very easy to use on this trailer. Uh, to get it to extend, just grab underneath here, give it a little pull and it's gonna pop out. To stow it, just pick up on the, on the front of it and just give it a little push and it's gonna pop in. Now, uh, New Camp has this set where that light is automatic on a switch. Um, so it automatically turns on and off with a step. On our entry door to get this thing to stay open, it's gonna be this little uh, puck deal here. All you've got to do is open up your door and push it all the way back and it's going to just snap in. You'll feel a little snap. That's going to have it snapped in and that's going to keep your door held open uh, as you're going in and out. You know, if you want to use the screen door or something like that. While we've got the door open, let me cover what we've got here on just the inside of the door. First things first, our fire extinguisher safety device it needs to be checked by you periodically just by pushing down on this little green button on top. Make sure it pops back up, tells us our, uh, pro, our fire extinguisher is still in good use. Um, up top here on our window, uh, just has a shade on it for privacy. Just slides up and down, very easy to use. A couple of bungees here that you can store some stuff in, and then we've got a little uh, waste basket here on the door as well. To use your door lock, when you're inside the trailer, if you wanna lock the door, all you're gonna do is push the lever to the up position in the red, and that's gonna have your door locked where it can be accessed from the outside. Center position is unlocked, can be used interior or exterior to get into the trailer. And to get out, all you got to do is push down and the door is going to uh, open up for you. Uh, also, your screen door here. To uh, use that, all you've got to do is just grab the side of it here and just pull it over. And it's going to slide all the way over into its receiver on this side. And that's pretty much it. And then to open it, just push it back the other way. That pretty much covers kind of all the exterior stuff on this trailer. So let's go inside and check out the inside. A uh, couple things here in the living space of this clamshell trailer. Um, it comes equipped with a lagoon table, <clears throat> which can be removed and again put on the outside of the trailer. But let me show you how this thing can be moved around uh, for your liking. Uh, all of it is controlled basically by these three levers here that can be tightened up and loosened. Uh, so you can move things around. So if you want to swivel this around, that, that lever just needs to be loose. And then you can turn the tabletop, position it into whatever position works best for you. Um, it has a lever underneath as well for loosening it up to make it uh, easier to spin around. Uh, but to take this thing off so we can make this into a bed, let me show you how that works. First of all, this needs to be loose. 
and then all you got to do is lift up on this and it's going to come off of the main piece there and then to get this piece off we've got to lower the bottom one and and then it's just going to slide up and off all right new for 2021 uh, new camp has changed their bed setup from slats to these pull out pieces here so the bench has now lid has now become two pieces that kind of slide together so um, let me show you how this works. So you can see here that this is a separate piece from the actual lid in a way. They do lift together, but this is separate. So these two pieces can bind on each other. So whenever you're pulling them out, try to pull as straight as possible and just do it slowly and you'll get them to come all the way out. If you rush it or pick up on it any, it may cause it to bind and give you a little bit of fit. So just keep it nice and flat and pull good and slow. It's the same for this side. Once you get them out, then you can pull your cushions down and make into a bed. And they just pull straight out from the wall. Like that. And then you'll have your bed. And you can make these sides individually now with this new system. So you can have one side seated and another side as a bed. Pretty cool option if you ask me. Uh, to put it up, it's just the opposite. Put your cushions back. And then same thing again. Just nice and steady push there and that's going to get your uh, bed board put away. Well, I've got this out. Let me show you a couple other things under these three panels back here in the back. Um, in the door side rear, you're going to find access to your Air 8. Not a whole lot in here, more for service stuff. Uh, pretty much all we're going to find back here, but let me show you what's here anyway. So that's going to be the Air 8 there. Under the big center one, you're going to find another piece of the Air 8 as well as the start to the Alda system. And then under this one, you're gonna find uh, more access to the rest of the Alda, that your water pump is in here, and then a lot of plumbing, as well as some other things in here. This is a lot of service area, more than customer area for you uh, there. But just so you know what's back here, that's what you got going on. All these black vents that you'll see around uh, these are going to be for your air eight, which is your air conditioning for this system. And then underneath the bench over here on the off door side, we're going to find our LP alarm. So uh, LP or CO gas, this thing's going to pick up on it and it's going to sound and annoy you and wake you up and hopefully get you out of the trailer before there's any issues. Uh, next to that, you're going to find a GFCI outlet with a trip and reset button. And as you can see, if it trips, you're going to see the red light come on. That means that the GFCI is tripped for some reason and needs to be reset. So all you have to do is push the reset button. The red light should go off and you should be good to go. Now, again, a GFCI outlet generally controls multiple outlets. So if you're having other 110 outlet issues, start here. Check that. Make sure everything's good. Moving on from there, we have your WFCO uh, power distribution panel. Inside, we're going to find your 110 breakers and your 12 volt fuses. Now, all of these are basic, uh, basic breakers and 12-volt fuses. And replacement fuses can be found pretty much at any type of automotive hardware store or basically a hardware store. And uh, these are just, they're just the same as any other type of fuse out there for cars. So moving over here for our uh, Alda control and our Air 8, we'll start with the Alda, which is the one up top. To get this thing going, all you got to do is push the power button, let it boot up. You're going to see it go through a couple of different screens here. And then this will be your primary screen. And you'll see on here a couple of things, room temperature, uh, pump recirculation, electricity, all that kind of good stuff here. Uh, so to change settings on this thing, all you gotta do is push the menu button and that's gonna bring up how everything is being controlled. So the top one is gonna be your uh, cabin temperature that you're trying to achieve. So right now you can see it's set at 86, which is pretty warm. So if you wanna change that, um, if it's summertime, whatever, I recommend taking this thing and just putting it all the way at the bottom. So that way it's, it's below temperature. Uh, I think it stops right around 44 degrees. Oh, 41. There you go. So that's where I run that in the summertime and the wintertime to decide where you want your cabin temperature. <clears throat> Set that temperature to what you want and then it, it'll heat up in here to that temperature. Below that's going to be a kind of a shower boost. So what this does is it'll give you additional uh, hot water for extended showers or if you've got multiple people needing to shower, 
you're going to take that, kick it all the way up, and you'll have more hot water or for a longer period of time. Below, that's going to be your power setting for electricity. Um, and it's got a one kilowatt and a two kilowatt setting, which is going to be how hot the heating element gets. Uh, two kilowatts, pretty high setting. Make sure whatever, make sure you're plugged into a true 30 amp power source if you're going to try to run the two kilowatt. It's going to pull a lot of power, so you don't want to be tripping any breakers. And if you need to run on gas, it's just going to be the little gas symbol. All you got to do is turn that on, and everything's going to light up on gas and work that way. Now, there are other features to this. There's timers and other things that you can do <clears throat> in your settings menu here that you can adjust. Um, uh, here at Princess Craft, we are going to be releasing another video on how all of this works, so keep your eyes open for that. Uh, to turn it off, just push the power button. It's going to shut down, turn off, and good to go. And that pretty much covers the basic features of the Alda system controller, so let's move down to the Air 8. This is going to be for your air conditioner only. And we've got a few buttons down here. You can see positive and negative on the end. This is going to be for uh, temperature control. The uh, fan looking one here is going to be for fan control. This is going to actually be our mode select. It's kind of a triangle. And then we've got our main power button. So to cycle through everything, let's turn it on first. Just push your power. You'll see everything light up. And you can see uh, different things. We've got our room temperature, time, and day, and all of that good stuff. So as I, as I said, this is going to be our temperature settings here. Um, but let me show you fan settings. So you've got low, medium, and high. You can see they just add blades to the fan there to show you that. And then we've got your um, mode select here. So as you touch that one, it's going to move through fan only. This is going to be a teardrop here is kind of like a, a humidity control. And then we've got uh, the snowflake, which is going to be actually for cooling. It's going to turn the compressor on for cooling. And then we're going to be able to adjust our desired room temperature. So as you can see here, we can go down to as low as 61 degrees. And then you can just find what you want from there. And set your desired room temperature. Let it do its thing. And it's going to do what it needs to do. Um, this default screen here, this is actually the actual room temperature right now. So if you're trying to achieve 67, this should start trickling down as it cools off in here. And that pretty much covers the basic features of your Air 8 control. So just below that, we've got your Jensen TV. To get this thing to swing away from the wall, it is held in place with a bungee cord. Just got to get it unhooked. So once you get that cord unhooked, then we can take your TV and swing it away from the wall. You can pitch it out if you're sitting over there or uh, you know, standing up in the front of the trailer, you can look back and see it uh, to get everything there. Now on the back side of this trailer, there uh, back side of this trailer. Now on the back side of this TV, there is an inline fuse for the 12 volt because it is a 12 volt power TV. Um, all you got to do is pop open this little cap, and you'll see the fuse in there. For some reason, the TV is not working. Check that guy out. Make sure it's not blown. Now you can hook up a variety of things to this typical types of hookups that you would see on a TV today. Um, this is hooked up already by a HDMI cable up to your radio that's overhead. And like I said, again, it is 12 volt powered and all that good stuff. Now, when you get ready to stow this, <clears throat> the bracket does need to swing into the open cavity over here and then it just swings back and away. So to get this thing to hook, all you got to do is get this bungee pulled good and tight to get it to loop back into that loop on the wall and that's gonna secure it. Uh, behind the TV, there is an extra uh, 110 outlet. So if you ever change this TV out to 110, there is an outlet right here that you could plug into, plus you can plug in a bunch of other stuff there as well. Um, all the cabinets in here, again, open up like the two in the clamshell. They have the, uh, the little pinch underneath that you have to pinch to open up, and then you've got some space in here. Overhead here, you'll see the uh, radio. Now again, this is just a radio, but it has Bluetooth features, so you can stream music to it. Uh, but obviously, no DVD player or anything like that on it. And you got some cubbies uh, for storage here. Um, let me show you how to operate the windows in this trailer. So all of the windows open up the same way. They all have these turn latches, um, and the bottom two have push buttons on them that have to be pushed to release those two. 
So once you get these turned, then you can push this window out. Once you find your desired setting, you do have to tighten up these knobs on the stays, and that's gonna help keep that window into the out position. Um, so you can keep that out, and then we've got screen selections for you that you can use, such as your daytime screen slash bug screen. So if you have the window open, you can pull this one down. It's gonna help minimize the bugs that could get into the trailer. And then the other option, it's gonna be your uh, nighttime screen or a kind of a blackout shade somewhat, if you will. Uh, it's gonna give you privacy inside the trailer uh, there. To get these to release, it's just this little clip here. Um, just a slight little pull out is all you need. Uh, and that's gonna allow that to separate from the two shades. Now, let me show you one other feature of this window um, that you have. Now, to get this thing to close, I like to loosen up one side, give a little support to the window so it doesn't slam shut when I loosen the other one, and let it come down. Now, each of these uh, uh, clip points has a secondary groove right here in the middle that you can take and close these into. And that'll give you a little bit of an air gap here, which is really good for getting in fresh air, say in a, on a rainy day. Um, but in rain's getting in, you can close it down like that and it'll stop the rain from getting in. So it's just kind of a ventilation versus fully open. Uh, but other than that, all you gotta do is pull them all the way closed, latch them all the way in, and you'll be ready for travel. Don't forget to do that. Um, so let me show you the overhead vent fan, which is really good to use if you've got your windows open because this thing moves a ton of air. So all we've got to do is crank this guy open. And your selector switch over here. So this fan, you can either uh, pull air out of the trailer or pull air into the trailer. So you just decide which one works best for you. And then all you've got to do is select your fan speed. This is a three speed fan. So just choose your speed and then it's going to start moving air in whichever direction you selected. Now, these fans move a ton of air. So if you've got your windows cracked or open in this fan on, you're going to get a good little breeze through here and it's actually pretty going to be pretty comfortable. Uh, but to shut it down, just turn it off, close the lid and you're good to go. Very simple. So let me show you uh, New Camp's monitor panel. This is coming right inside the door of the trailer uh, right here. So up top, we've got uh, a couple things. One says gray. One says fresh and one says battery. The other one says NA. This would have been for the black tank on a different model. They're no longer using a black tank on this model uh, since it's a cassette toilet. So that one has been taken off. So all you gotta do to check your levels is just push the corresponding battery and you'll see the LEDs light up here and tell you where your tank levels are, fresh gray and water. So as you're filling your fresh tank, you may wanna have somebody in here or you'll wanna go back and forth checking it so you don't overfill your gray tank. I'm sorry, overfill your fresh water tank. Um, and then as your gray tank gets full, you just go outside, hook it up, and pull the gray lever and dump it. So the other switches that we have up here is gonna be our water pump switch. So if you're dry camping and your fresh water tank is full, you're gonna flip that on, you'll see the pump light come on, you're gonna hear the pump run until the system's pressurized, and then you'll have water at all your fixtures. Now that pump will cycle on and off as water pressure drops and, and then shut off as it increases. So if you have something constantly on, the pump's probably gonna constantly run until you shut that fixture and it rebuilds pressure. Uh, the other two things that we have are gonna be our um, porch light, which is gonna be this amber porch light right outside the entry door. We're gonna have our sink light. They call it a sink light. Obviously there's no sink up here. That's gonna be this big strip light that's underneath these two cabinets right here. So you can see that one turning on and off. And then we have our accent light, uh, which is gonna be the two lights um, right underneath, right over the two windows, uh, large windows in the living area. And that pretty much covers your um, monitor panel and all pretty much all the switches in this trailer. Uh, just below that, we're gonna have your smoke alarm, nine volt powered smoke alarm, test button. It's just like smoke alarm, test it, replace the nine volt battery as necessary. Again, we have storage up here in the front with the push latches. Uh, just push them and they release so you can open them up and you've got plenty of storage in here. Now this one over here, got a couple of cool things in it. You'll see in the back corner here, we do have a 110 outlet and then another 12 volt charge station. Now there is a hole in the back top of the countertop here right here, so you just pop that little plastic plug out and you can run cords 
from up here down into the cabinet to plug them in. So if you want to run your cell phone charge cord up out of there, it's not all exposed or a coffee pot, put it up here, plug it in under there and leave it. It's kind of a cool option for you there. I've also got your new camp owner's manual bag in there that has all your goodies in it from new camp. And then this one down here again is just for storage. So moving into the bathroom. So the, the door they're using here has a uh, magnetic catch in it. It's actually pretty cool. So you can see when you pull the handle back, that magnet pulls back. But when you open it, woo, no magnet exposed, kind of cool. So when you close it, you'll see that magnet come out and lock this door into place for travel. Pretty cool new little handle they're using. So moving inside the bathroom, a couple things in here. Um, your water use on the back wall. So to turn this thing on and off, you're basically gonna just tip it up. That's gonna be for your flow control. And then left and right or back and forth, however you want to look at that, is going to be temperature control. So you do have a sink here that you can use for washing hands in. Or this thing actually pulls out and can hang right up here to become your shower. And then you have um, a different spray pattern on it here. For your privacy shade here, it's just a, uh, all you got to do is slide it back and forth to close it off. Toilet paper holder, dry storage, all you got to do is open up. Toilet paper roll is just going to sit in there. And then we've got your other part of your cassette toilet. So when you open this thing up, uh, you're gonna see that you've got your blade valve down there in the bottom, which is controlled with this lever right here. So to use it, all you gotta do is push this button right here, which is gonna pump water into the bowl. Uh, once you find your level there, uh, do your business, flush everything down, and then you can flush some fresh water in on top of that. And then close it off when you're done and you're good to go. And that's about it for that. Uh, the overhead light in the bathroom is controlled with a button right on the light. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging with me as we got through this uh, 2021 Tab 320 Clamshell Boondock Edition. I know there's a lot to these that uh, New Camp has changed, so got some cool features. Again, I'm Cody with Princess Craft RV, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to give us a call.